I had been told, I had been warned, that the facilities for cruising yachts in Aruba was diabolical. I was about to find out. The customs and immigration jetty was made of concrete and had been known to damage many yachts in the past. This day was a heavy swell and no one there to help me. Bearing in mind this is a major port and I had called ahead and they were expecting me. Eventually this guy sort of sauntered into view and, well, sort of helped. To be fair, the people there were very friendly, the customs and immigration were efficient and courteous, and I only had to wait about 20 minutes. A long 20 minutes with my boat bouncing up and down against a concrete jetty. Uh, but that's, that's the way it is sometimes, you just have to deal with these things. This is the island of Aruba. I've been here now, uh, it's Monday night. I've been here since um, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, I've lost track. But uh, I've been, since I left uh, Curacao, I've been a week on this boat just about and I haven't been off it. I haven't managed to get ashore yet. I could have, there's been a few opportunities. The uh, first day I was tired after a trip, you, you just want to sleep. But um, it's calmed down now, but it keeps gusting. We're getting gusts of like 30 knots plus. Uh, the dinghy is like, whoo, <laughs> trying to jump up in the air. Um, I've got some friends that have arrived, uh, American guys in their catamaran, and some other Dutch people I don't know who, and some Brazilians were here. Everybody's gone ashore tonight. And I just got that feeling, you think, I don't want to leave my boat. It's, 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 it's a lot better than it was, but earlier it was just howling. It was getting to that, that bit where it stops howling and starts to scream. And um, I put nearly 40 meters of chain out in the bow. It's like, boy, ah, boom. This reef behind us, um, only in three meters of water, and I got, I think, 37 meters out. So it should theoretically be okay. But you just, you know, it's my boat. You don't want to. There's one over there, looks like he's shifting now. Okay, so he has, he has, uh, he has dragged, he's re-anchoring. You see, so they were on board. It's, it's just my life. Uh, I can't afford to risk it. Yeah, they're going round again, they're re-anchoring, so they've definitely just dragged. Yet again, my predictions are coming true. Boat next to me dragged anchor. Don't know what happened for sure, but they're certainly doing something with the anchor. I came on deck a few minutes ago and they were way, 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 way down back there. I need to go to the shops. I need water, I need everything. And I dare not come off the boat. Once, you, once you've broken out your anchor um, in rough weather, trying to reset it again is it, it's, it's hard sometimes. I really do hope these guys uh, manage to, 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 to do a good job with this because uh, there's a bloody great reef just over here. At last the weather improved just enough for me to get ashore. 
I'd now been on the boat for two whole weeks without setting foot on land, and I was really, really looking forward to getting ashore and eating something that I hadn't cooked. A shadow right there. <laughs> Look how far out. This was full of boats before. They've all gone and left me out there by myself. The capital of Aruba is Orangistad, and compared to the rest of the island is quite nice, but it is very, very vulgar with casinos and shops selling highly overpriced goods and services, and a few pools as well. They are people walking about enjoying their uh, one or two weeks of holiday, so you can't really blame them, but I just found the place a little bit over the top. Currently in this hotel in Aruba, and they've got their own uh, waterway that comes actually into the uh, hotel. I'm sure I wouldn't get the yacht in here, but I'd get the dinghy in. <laughs> It'd almost be worth getting thrown out of the hotel just to do it. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I've seen the island, I've seen a big pink building. Uh, and lots of things I can't afford, that's it. I'm down the back streets looking for a cheap Chinese supermarket. Yeah! Supermarket for food. I have a list here and I haven't put anything on, off this list in the, in the basket. It's like four or five dollars for a bag of rice here. Seriously expensive. The cheapest thing I found is because it's a Chinese store, soy sauce. It's like three dollars, which is good. That's all right. I love this stuff, but it, here it's eleven dollars, US dollars. It's just insane. There used to be a winch there. While getting the boat ready for the next part of her journey, I found a problem. This is one of the two main winches. This one's from the starboard side, so it's important. Now it's over here, 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 and here. On the winch I've got taken apart, this didn't work anymore. Basically this uh, central core here was completely and utterly seized up. As you can see, this is the bit that wasn't turning uh, when it's removed from the winch assembly. It took me a hellish time to get it out because it fits in a sleeve that where the, the tolerance is so small. Uh, this this uh, makes a lot of uh, friction. If it's not lubricated, which is precisely what's happened, this, this old uh, lubricant, uh, grease or whatever was used at the time, has uh, solidified with dust from probably Mindelo and uh, completely seized the whole thing up. It took me a while to get it out, but to get it out I did. Been using a bit of abrasive uh, cleaner on the uh, shaft here, and that's done a great job. I'm pleased with that. Every man should have a clean shaft. Just about to put it all back together again. This is a lot of work. I've been at this all day. All bolted back on the boat, all the gubbins inside. It took some doing, I tell you. Right, put those back on there. But just a quick test, we'll uh, stick matey boy on there. And uh, I'll do the final bit in a minute, but just to check. Yeah, there you go, look at that. Perfect. I need that winch, that was the reason for doing it now. It has to be ready. Whoa, windy again. But I'm going ashore. <laughs> I was feeling pleased with myself, a big shop, lots of provisions, boat loaded and on my way home. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the engine could suddenly stop and I could find myself drifting towards the reef, helpless. That's what could go wrong. And it did. After unsuccessfully trying to row against wind and tide and getting a little bit more desperate, I managed to flag down one of the tourist boats who took me in tow. turned out to be quite a wild ride and certainly was the fastest that Baby Shaddy had ever been. Mm -hmm. 
As we approached Shadow, I called to my rescuer to drop me on the high side, that was upwind of Shadow, so I could drift back safely. But he dropped me on the side, I grabbed hold of the boat, but the weight of his boat pulling on me, uh, well, I just couldn't hold us. Uh, so we drifted back downwind, he threw me my rope and left leaving me then to row back upwind with a dinghy full of water and food. Having then to unload the boat and shift all the heavy water canisters on board was something I wasn't looking forward to. I was soaking wet and not in a very good mood. And then when I got to the food that I'd bought, a lot of it had been destroyed. The seawater had got in and ruined a lot of my food. I hadn't had a very good time on Aruba. A weather bound on my boat for two weeks with rain and wind and I decided I had to get myself a good time before I left the island so went ashore and found this which made me feel really good and then I had one of these that made me feel even better and then well I, um, I had some of this as well and that made me feel excellent so life wasn't that bad after all things were looking up I managed to make it ashore and the guys felt sorry for me. <laughs> no, I had to pay for it. I got the bucket and the ice for free. So I've sort of got no beer on my boat. So uh, <laughs> it cost me a bloody fortune. There you go. Next time on Adventures of an Old Sea Dog, I'm walking the streets of Colombia. As ever, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks also to my patrons for their amazing support. If you'd like to help, please check out my Patreon page. Uh, for real-time updates to find out what I'm actually doing in real life, uh, check out my Facebook page. All links are below. Please don't forget to subscribe and put a thumbs up there at the end of the video. I love you so much. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. I'm not really in a position. Oh, sun, man. I've now been here. Uh, this is, is that? Bloody dingy trying to sail. Will this never f***ing end?